Hello everyone, welcome to Market Demystifiers. Today I want to discuss with you three things. First, the US inflation. Second, the Fed Minutes and the Jackson Hole Symposium. Third thing, Nvidia earnings. So start it with inflation in the US. So as it was expected, and as I was telling you in our last video, inflation, which was gradually going down month after month, has finally started its um, awakening, its upward momentum. Now, the, um, the number which came, the year-over-year -year change was 3.2%, which was slightly lower than what the uh, Cleveland's Fed model was predicting, which was 34 but we, we, st we had our inflection point, and now the question is how high it will go. Now, using the Cleveland's Fed model, uh, as you can see on my screen here at the bottom, the prediction for the August CPI, which is the US inflation, the headline inflation is 3.8. So we would go up from 3.2 to 3.8. And as I was saying in the last video, 3.2% is not a big increase from 3%. So people can still uh, feel um, quite happy with it. But after the inflation will go up to 3.6 to 3.8 in the next uh, reading based on based on the, the model, and then potentially even higher. This can be a moment when people will start changing their mindset. Now, why it is happening? So firstly, as I was also telling you in my prior videos, we have this high, still high level of core CPI, core inflation, which is the headline inflation, so the full inflation, excluding the volatile food and energy prices. And the Fed still needs to uh, make this number lower and the second point is that we have reinflation occurring in commodities and food prices and here on my screen you can see the quarter till date um, performance in the market and again what is at the top is not s p 500 it's not nasdaq it's soybean oil heating oil oats canola gasoline soybeans and you know so far we had the inflation reading for for July, so the first month in the quarter, it was higher. Now, probably in the next months in the quarter, starting with August, we will see more impact of of this of the increases in cotton, soybean, crude oil, WTI, cocoa, soybeans, oil, and so on and so on. So this is why the the Fed, the Cleveland's Fed model is is forecasting a higher year-over-year -year inflation reading. And I believe that that's what we will see. Now, because of those increases, Fed cannot stop raising interest rates yet, or for sure can, cannot start cutting them. And firstly, on 16th of August, we got the Fed minutes. Now, you might ask, what are the Fed minutes? So that's basically a document which shows what were the views of the participants during the last Fed meeting? So basically, it tells you what the participants of the last Fed meeting were talking about, what are their views, what are their projections. So that's quite important. And in this document, we saw that the Fed officials were cautious and were afraid of the potential upside risks to inflation. What, and this was 16th of August. What came next is last Friday, so the, um, the Jackson, Jackson Hole Symposium. And that's an annual event when the Fed uh, chairman, in this case Jerome Powell, d delivers um, its, um, its remarks on the uh, current outlook of the economy. And what happened last year is that from the um, Jackson Hole um, Symposium, where Jerome Powell d delivered very brief and very quick um, uh, speech when, when he told us that pain is ahead of us, we had this big crash in both the traditional markets and crypto. Now in this symposium, Jerome Powell, I would say, was not that hawkish, but he also reassured that there is still work which needs to be done to cool inflation, that the current levels are too high and that they are prepared, the Fed is prepared to raise feather and hold the rates high for longer. Now, you can say that those are just words, but the market reacted. So there is, um, as you can see here, this is um, probabilities basically assigned by the market 
to what the rate will be on the next meeting. And right now, as you can see here in the middle of my screen, the current target rate, so the Fed fund rate, is 525 to 550. And here we are looking at the September meeting. And as you can see, there is an 80% probability that the rates will stay unchanged on the September meeting. And that's yet to be seen because before the 20th of September, we will get another CPI reading. And if this reading would be a, an uptick, as it is currently uh, pr pr estimated or, or projected, we might see some switch in those probabilities. But what's very interesting that when you go to the November meeting that will happen on 1st of November, now look at this. The current target rate is 50, 500. 25 to 550 and there is a the highest probability is on a 25 basis points hike in um, in um, November and what is even more interesting is that as you can see here so in this uh, row at the bottom you can see this one 25 25 basis point hike and now the probability is 50 percent one day ago, so before the, um, the Jackson Hole speech delivered by Jerome Powell, it was 46%. One week before, it was 38%. And one month ago, it was 29.7%. So you can see that the market is starting to price those rate hikes and, and is assigning lower probabilities or on keeping the rates at the same level or even cutting them. So that's something which we need to take into consideration because if inflation will again start going up and then the Fed would still need to stay on course and hike rates or keep them high for longer. This will cause pain to the market. Now let's go to the last point which I wanted to discuss with you. So Nvidia. Nvidia um, delivered um, the, the, their earnings and what was slightly surprising for me is that not only they have beat their, est their estimation, their revenue estimation for NVIDIA was 11.5 billion and the actual revenue for the quarter was 13.5 billion. So that's a bid by 2.4 billion. And what's more interesting is that for the next quarter, they raised the estimate even higher for 16 billion. So something interesting is going on because it looks like Nvidia is only going higher, higher, more powerful, because let's not forget that the, the, before this actual 13.5 billion of revenue, which came in this quarter, on the prior quarter, they had around 7 billion of revenue. So it was significantly lower. So it looks like they're accelerating significantly. So let's look what, the, what their stock price have done. So what we have here is potentially a blow of stock. So what happened, and to better see it, we will go to one hour chart, is that Nvidia closed on, on Wednesday here at $470. And then on the next day, it opened with a gap. It went higher to $500. But then during the same day, it, it closed here, here. So basically, it erased all of the gains which were achieved thanks to this earnings surprise, thanks to this massive earning, earnings beat and an even higher expectation for revenue for the next quarter. It went higher in the same day and then it erased the whole gains in the same day. And on the next day, look what happened. It went even lower. So does it look like a powerful reaction after such a massive beat in earnings? No, it doesn't. Very interesting to see what happens next. Because look, here, do, do, this is the daily chart. And here we have May. This was their prior earnings. This is a massive gap boom it went higher and here you have their last earnings gap up blow off top erase the gains in the same day go even lower in the next day hmm. interesting interesting let's see what happens next and if we are about to see a bigger retracement in price because for sure supply and sellers came at this point and they have pushed the price lower and what's also quite interesting is that TSMC, which is the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturer Company, which is the manufacturer of NVIDIA, has also reported earnings before, and year over year, their revenue is down 10%. Whereas NVIDIA uh, revenue year over year is up 100%. So something doesn't really tie up. So let's see what will happen next. 
Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Comment, I'm looking for your comments and see you in the next one. Have a good day, bye bye.